I'm pleased to be joined by Utah quarterback Cameron Rising. Cam, how you doing, man? Doing good. Just happy to be here. Right on, bro. Uh, I want to start with some earlier buzz uh, this month. You went to the Manning Passing Academy. The buzz out of there is, hey, this dude can not only spin it, and he's mobile enough to take advantage of that. I always thought that was a part of a, your game that's underrated, your ability to move. Do you think so? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, growing up my whole life, I've been an athlete. Just playing basketball was one of my favorite things. Ran track in high school and yeah, not a lot of people give me credit in the athleticism department, but, you know, it is what it is. And just you can watch some games and kind of find out for yourself. <laughs> That's what's up. What did you learn from the Manny Passing Academy? Uh, just the amount of knowledge that that guys like Peyton and Eli have and just seeing their attention to detail and, and how they focus on so much that they learned throughout the week and, and how their pretty much whole entire career was was laid out and kind of just get that idea of what, what it means to be a professional quarterback. And now you're one of the guys that is expected to be off the board pretty early in 2023. But I want to take it back to high school. I mean, your recruitment journey and your early career are just fascinating to me. So I want to walk through it if that's okay. Absolutely, yeah. So first, what led you to eventually commit to Oklahoma? Uh, Lincoln Riley, actually. It just He's a phenomenal coach and had, had some great meetings with him and always good conversations on the phone and really, really wanted to, to play under him. And then that went away? Yeah, uh, not not necessarily. I I never I never felt any ill will or anything towards towards coach. Uh, I think he's a phenomenal coach, and he's uh, he's always going to be good no matter what situation he's in. But I I wasn't sure if he was going to be there, and and that that, that kind of played a little part into that situation right there with Texas. So you end up at Texas. Yep. And what was it like to be quarterback on the Forty Acres? Um, it was fun. I mean, it, it was good, but it just this really wasn't wasn't for me. It wasn't the the, the fit and the scheme that I wanted to be a part of, and. And I kind of just wanted to expand my my horizons and, and kind of get di a different opportunity. And you got that opportunity at the University of Utah, but it's interesting to hear you say, hey, it wasn't really fit for me. I wouldn't have picked Utah out for you too either, man. I mean, I would have picked out something that was much more air raid, spread friendly. What about Utah drew you there? Well, it was actually between Oregon and, and, and Utah back in the day. But the main thing that really played that part is, is just Coach Whittingham, just making sure that you have the same guy that you come in with. And, and that, that was really my main focus to make sure that this is going to be my coach and, and this is what I got and just make it work from there. Coach Witt can be a hard dude to play for, right? He expects a lot. He doesn't give a lot. What was your first welcome to my world? I'm Coach Witt. This is Utah football story. Um. Nothing really stands out, but uh, I can tell you my OC, there was a little moment where I was kind of just giggling in the in the room because we watched some clips of of an option and, and the quarterback got blasted and and I, I started laughing, you know, and he said, he said, what's so funny? Like, I bet you wouldn't be laughing. That was you and just kind of kind of put me in my place a little bit and kind of told me not to be giggling or laughing in the in the in the room. And that was kind of my, my moment of welcome to Utah football. <laughs> so you get to Utah. You sit, you're competing with Charlie Brewer for the job. He beat you out for the job, but you stayed ready. How did you take advantage of the opportunity to just play? Um, just just try to make sure that I was ready for the moment and and really try to do my due diligence to prepare for the for the game and make sure that I was acting like I was a starter and acting accordingly and just really handling my 20 square feet so that I can be there for the team when when that when that time comes. Early in the season, the offensive line was really taking some criticism on. And you seemed to steady them just by being that guy in the pocket for them, behind them. What would you say to them? Um, I didn't really have to get them going. They they knew they knew what, what just happened in those first few games, and they knew that they had to improve. And and it's a prop to, to the whole room because they, they really took ownership in what they wanted to do and what they wanted to accomplish or accomplished during the season. So that – kind of just made my job easier. And I was just trying to make sure I'm getting the ball out as fast as I can. So their, their job's as easy as it gets. It's one thing to beat Oregon once. It's another to beat them twice in three weeks. Yeah, in 13 days. In 13 days, yeah. yes. How did you feel when that was accomplished? It's crazy. I mean, you always you always hear that it's always hard to beat a team twice. And, and you, you kind of are like, oh, okay, we just gave them, probably, we probably played the most complete game that we could in that in that first game. And Everything seemed to go our way, so we we knew it was definitely going to be different, and it was just going to be a different feel because they were coming for blood, and and we we're just excited for that opportunity to try to improve ourselves again in that in that same type of situation. I point to those two games taking place in 13 days because earlier in the season, 
Oregon had beaten Ohio State in Columbus. Y'all have an opportunity to play against Ohio State in the Rose Bowl. You get injured early. I'm going to give you an opportunity here. Had you not been injured, Utah wins that football game. It's a, it's a what if, and you can't really live off that. And just whatever, whatever happened in that football game, that's, that's, the, that's the end result. So we got to live with it. Defending Pac-12 champs, uh, do you feel as if y'all are not being properly appreciated for being the defending Pac-12 champs going into 2022. Yeah, I mean, it's all it's all noise outside, and and it doesn't really matter to me whether they're for us or against us, and that's just that's just my mentality. Whatever happens inside the facility, that's that's really where my focus is, and and what what really matters to to the team. Utah quarterback Cameron Rising, thank you so much. Sir, for time, appreciate sir. you, RJ. I'm pleased to be joined by Utah head coach Kyle Whittingham. Coach, how you doing? Doing good, thank you. Let's start with this, Coach. Uh, the way that the season ended for you was dramatic. It's one of the best Rose Bowls that I've ever seen. Fortunately, I'm losing into that. But what did you learn from that defeat? Well, I don't know what we learned. There's no moral victories in our program. I mean, it's uh, you know it's disappointing that we weren't able to come out on top. Give Ohio State credit. They played a terrific game. Their quarterback was outstanding. Uh, offensively, we played exceptionally well, put up a bunch of points, but but uh, just didn't get enough done on defense. But but uh, it was great to get over that hump of you know winning the Pac-12, and because we've been uh, to the championship game three times now, including last year. And the first two times we fell short, but uh, to be able to get that monkey off our back, I guess you could say, has has been the objective since we joined the conference 11 years ago, and so that was. Uh, a milestone of sorts for our program and the, really the next logical step in the evolution of our program. Your program is one of a handful that I believe are on the verge of receiving an invitation to college football playoff. One game here, one game there, you're getting in. What do you think it takes? Well, you got you, you to win. I mean, that's the bottom line. Mm. And so we've uh, been right there knocking at the door. As you said, we were one game away in 2019, I believe mm -hmm. it was, where if we would have won that Pac-12 championship game, we were a lock to be mm -hmm. in the CFP. But but uh, and that's really a, a motivating factor for our football team this year is to try to to get to that point. We had uh, several guys who could have come out into the NFL draft that stayed for a, an extra year to try to accomplish that objective. So we'll see what happens. One of those guys is Cam Rising, just came back from the Manning Passing Academy. What did you see from him that led you to say, hey, this guy can help us at Utah? Well, first of all, we knew about him when he came out of high school. He didn't ultimately choose uh, Utah out of high school. He went to Texas, mm -hmm. and so we got him uh, as a transfer um, three years ago, I believe it's been. Mm -hmm. And uh, we knew of him, like I said, because we had scouted him during his high school days, terrific high school player. And uh, when we got him in the program, it was very apparent that he was a leader mm -hmm. and had the uh, the it factor that you look for in a quarterback. Uh, got into our program, just continued to develop and get better and better. And and uh, you know he's invaluable to us right now as uh, as the leader and the quarterback of our football team. September is always one of my favorite times of year, Coach, because mm -hmm. I get to see these non conference matchups that I'm salivating over. <laughs> you have one of them this year. Yes, we do. Utah versus Florida, and you also got an ace in the hole, right? Mamu Diabate. That's right. What are you expecting from him? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure he'll be more than motivated in that yeah. game. And he, he transferred from Florida yeah. uh, this past off season. Terrific player at Florida. Led the team in tackles last year, and uh, you know wasn't able to play spring ball. He was coming off an injury and rehabbing an injury, so we we didn't get to look at him in the spring. But he's now 100, percent and I can't wait to get started next week and watch him on the field and see what he can do. Coach, it's curious to me that we're in this space where we're talking about. Conferences changing, allegiances, conference realignment, name, image, and likeness, the transfer portal. You've been at Utah long enough to have seen all of this and had to react to it. How do you feel about the future of the sport? Well, it's changing. There's no doubt about it. And there's no uh, there's no stopping it. And so you can't worry about, do I like it? Do I not like it? You just got to be able to adapt and adjust as things change. And, and the landscape is uh, far from... Uh, finished being changed there's a lot more on the horizon in my opinion i don't have any inside scoop or inside knowledge but just you you can see it happening and, and the super conferences and the full-blown playoff and all those things are are right on the horizon and so what has to happen is when all the dust settles you better hope you're on the right side of that line in the sand because there's going to be the haves and the have-nots and a big chasm in between much more so than there exists right now the sense I get from you, Coach, is that you are a show me type of person in yeah, that absolutely. don't really want to talk about <laughs> it or want to be about it. Uh, and your program has been nothing but first class. And I believe that one of the better coaches in this league. I say all that to say, what do I have to tell people to get them to understand that you've been playing outstanding football at Utah for the past 20 years? 
Yeah, well, first of all, I can show them our record. You know, that speaks for itself. I mean, our guy very proud of the the games that our guys have won. You look at and as proud or more so is our academic record. You know, we're always one or two in the league in graduation rate and APR and those type of things, the measurables that that the NCAA puts on uh, academics, and and we're very proud of that. And you know, you come to Utah, you're going to win a bunch of games, you're going to get your degree, and that's our selling point. I appreciate that, Coach. Utah Coach Kyle Whittingham, thank you so much for your time, thank sir. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thanks for watching this video. And remember, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos on the number one ranked show YouTube channel.